2023 Garrard's Horse and Hound Miracle Mile winner, Catch a Wave, Kate Gaff. Congratulations. Thank you. What a thrill. It must have been a huge... Firstly, that was just a brilliant race. It must have been great to be a part of that actual race out there. Yeah, I think because I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't think I'd be in front. Um, best scenario was that MacDan come out hard and I could come out with it and we could, you know, force the issue a little bit and it's kind of what happened, but it wasn't what I thought would happen and we just got a bit of luck and then we backed off that second quarter and then after that it was just um, game over. It's a different track to drive at and, and this horse seems to be relishing mm. this bigger track. He seems to get in his in a groove and once he's in that groove, he's going to be very, very hard to beat. Yeah, the first time here he didn't handle it well. I went back at the start and he just... He never felt comfortable that we sort of were going to go around in the second quarter. That's what Andy wanted me to do. And they were sort of running about a 28 and a half. And I didn't go because I just I wasn't travelling. I was running up the track. I just um, didn't feel comfortable at all. Even around the last corner and I was three wide. He, he just didn't feel comfortable on the track. But then the next, two, you know, the next week for the chariots, he felt so much better. And then um, I just think sometimes they take that one run here where they run flat out the whole way. At home, we back, back a quarter off and... I think it makes a difference and it's just a little bit new for them when they, you know, race here for the first time. What Describe the elation when you hit the line. You've won a lot of big races, like, and there's a great story to this. For the Twitter people, we can only do about a two-minute video, so I sort of cut them a little bit short. But can you describe that footage, uh, that, that emotion, I suppose, when you hit the line? I don't know if I can. It's, it's, it's um, like, it's, I guess it's pure elation, maybe even ecstasy to an extent. Um, it's something that, uh, like, I've won a lot of Group 1, well, grand, big races now, and it's just fortunate enough that it keeps happening or we have that little bit of luck tonight where we found the front and then where we got that second breather. Because if you find the front in a 25-5 and then get hammered the whole way, it's going to be pretty hard to hold on and win. So I just feel like, you know, um, you do need, like, that little bit of luck. Like, you still had to go 25-5 out the gate, so I'm not saying you needed all the luck, but you just need that little bit somewhere. And he got that, and because of that, he was able to win the race. So, you know, it's just, I mean, I learned in the chariots that you've got to be in it to win it because I may have uh, whinged to Andy for two weeks on making me come, not making me come, but saying, oh, because Andy, he wasn't on the radar to come to the chariots. Andy was convinced he didn't want to bring him. Then he changed his mind. And I was like, why? And then he said, uh, oh, there's no other races for him. I think we'll just go. And I sort of thought we wouldn't be able to beat Captain Ravishing, but not that there's anything wrong with second, but you still got to run second. And then after the chariots and the way he went, I was just, you know, in awe of my own horse instead of, you know, Captain Ravishing. And um, even though I'm still in awe of that horse, but yeah, I just, he just keeps getting better all the time. And, you know, we've got him and um, he's, he just keeps getting the job done and probably just getting better all the time, like I said. And he seems to be getting his manners better. What happened the first start? Um, he wears a, a cord and the rain rolled over back the other way, which is an unusual um, completely uncommon with cords and because um, the uh, barrier attendant had him I was leading him up and then it rolled it rolled back the wrong way and then I was like oh no this is oh, we can't you know go up like that so we had to correct that so that's what happened no, that's all right because because his manners are getting better and better yeah. um, it was a couple, the summer carnival in Melbourne I know he looked at some shadows he wanted to run off the track he can be a little bit quirky but this trip away these couple of trips I can well, Andy, we're going to say well done to Andy too. Well done to Andy for promoting the sport because he puts all the, the Tarkata Hotel. It's going to get more people to stay there than anyone. <laughs> but promoting it, um, these three trips away, to me, I might be wrong, but it seems to really have matured the horse. Yeah, he's handled it so well. And that was another reason Andy was keen to come to the chariots because if he you know, did get in the Eureka, we didn't want to have to travel him away from home in a race like that for the first time. But he just loves it. He just eats everything, drinks every. He just looks after himself. You literally don't have to do a thing to him. He thinks he's a king in the barn, in the retention barn. He's got the best of both worlds, fans, water misters. He just loves it. And he's settled and he's just taken to it like a pro. So definitely um, would think that there's no problems with that going forward. And being a gelding, he must look at those other boys and think, what are you on about? I know, I think he does. That's the one good thing about him. And Richard, all these horses he owned, um, he gelded them straight away when he'd buy colts the yearling sales because he had so many mares on his property. So that's one less thing to worry about as well. You mentioned Richard and the family and the joy afterwards. I keep saying harness racing is a family sport. It is getting more professional. We're racing for more money and all the rest. They'll never take away that family sport. And the scenes that I see right there on the lawn afterwards and even just listening to the speech and the son choking back some tears, it, it is so good. So sad that Richard can't be here, but it's so 
this next phase, I suppose, of the Richard Matthews family and the legacy that he's going to leave, these kids are just loving every minute of it, aren't they? Yeah, like they had nothing to do with horses. And poor Dave, one of his sons, he just just copped the job and he just took it on. And he just, you know, Andy's been educating him on what's a good run and a bad run in sectionals because the poor guy knew nothing about the sport. And now he really looks forward to racing, you know, coming home from work and racing the horses and watching the horses race. You know, he said, I can understand why Dad did this. It's such a you know good outlet to have an enjoyable one and um and even his daughters that are here tonight like um pauline she stays home she hasn't been to the races um since um you know richard's passing but the girls came and like they're the most loveliest family all of them and like you said something you know tragic happened but something unbelievably good's come out of it and that's that his legacy lives on and it's got more people into the sport that I actually didn't know have anything to do with it and are really enjoying it. Winning the Miracle Mile with chariots or not, they, they, they are still going, enjoying going to Kilmore and winning a race. So it's, um, it's been, a, you know, it's a double-edged sword, but one that's, um, you know, that when Richard, that's what Richard wanted. He wanted his legacy to live on. He didn't want this horse sold. He didn't want it gone. You know, he said, this horse has to race. Like, keep him racing. And they've honoured that to their credit. Oh, and they have, they're going to have a, a rip and ride and... Um yeah, you know, you've got the Eureka coming up back here. Um, now things get a little bit tricky for him too, I suppose. It's not as if there's going to be a stack of races around for him. The excitement level, you've got the Cortina Racing and their great supporters here of Menangle. And the excitement level, looking at the Eureka, like you've just won a million-dollar race. There's a $2 million race on the radar now. How does, how does that excitement level look for that? Yeah, um, I like being the underdog, um, <laughs> but I don't know about that. But, um, you know, Leap to fame, fame isn't back yet, and... Like, I just think everyone that loves this sport is in for a treat. Like, imagine that, you know, Leap to Fame, Captain Ravishing, catch a wave in a race together. Like, I know it's going to get down to draws and, and somewhat the luck with that, but it's just, like, we've got so much to look forward to and so, such, you know, exciting four-year-olds, like, good horses. Like, it's been a while, I think, since we've had, like, you know, those outstanding... Maybe not, sorry for being disrespectful to anyone. I have, you know, a bit of a short memory, but, you know, horses as exciting as that, like... And I just feel like this is what the sport needed and it's really important for it going forward and, like, I'm just... I'm as excited as anyone else out there to, you know, see what the future holds. I'm lucky I get to hold a microphone and promote it. It's easy to promote when these things uh, happen. (laughs) Just one quick one. You said there it's almost an addiction. You run. Um, I don't run as much as I did. That's why the buttons are a bit tighter than what they should be. Winning that race, hitting the line, is it that sort of same euphoria, I suppose, is what you get when you have a a good hard run? Was that what it was like or something totally different? Yeah, look, I guess to an extent, but I'm not fast enough to win any running races. So I don't think you can get that feeling, that like winning feeling, especially like a group one. Like, I don't think you can get it doing anything else unless you are an Olympian or an athlete winning gold medal or the best in the world or, you know, the best in the country. So I think anyone that's, you know, lucky enough to do that, owners, trainers, drivers, it doesn't get old. Like sometimes, you know, I've been doing this a while now and, you know, it can get tough like the workload and stuff and when you do something for such a long time, sometimes, you know, it can get a bit monotonous but winning group, this is what it's about and winning group one races doesn't get that and when you get that feeling, like... You know, if I gave it away tomorrow, I wouldn't get that feeling from anything else that I did in life that I'm aware of. I spoke to Rex Hocking. He won it 50 years ago with Reichman. And I said to him about that, when you go past a line and anyone has been fortunate enough to drive a winner or even be in a race, you do get that moment of silence, I suppose, after a race, whether you just block everything out. Mm-hmm. That would have been pretty special, just you and him when you're pulling up, I would imagine, when you just got that time to yourself straight after it. No media, no one else in your way. It must have been very special for you and um, catch a wave out over the back straight. Yeah, there was no one else near me at that stage either. So, um, you know, at uh, that stage it was just, you know, him and I. And it was a little bit of a feeling of, you know, I, of a little bit disbelief still, even though I'm lucky enough to continue winning these sort of races. I still never go out there thinking I'm just going to win or, like, this race is probably one of the most intriguing races and unknown races of what I thought was going to happen pre-race like I didn't know I'd gone through every scenario in my head I'd watch replays of like the last seven you know and I really really had to come from the fence if you were going to run on you, even in an eight horse field you really didn't want to be back last or wide and um, I just didn't know and I went on to track and I just didn't really know like I I'd, I'd played everything out in my head so at the time if it happened I could snap straight onto it but I, I went out there not really knowing what was going on and um, 
and then my job was made easy when I found the front. So, I, yeah, it's just this belief of, you know, having that little bit of luck to find the front, getting that cheap second quarter and these things just keep happening where we're able to win. But to the horse's credit, he, he did it pretty well and, you know, he probably could have went a little bit quicker. Kate, you're a credit to the industry. I love interviewing you. You're a credit. You always give me the time. No matter what's going on, you didn't even know where your horse was when you come back. <laughs> you're a Team Teal ambassador, so get real support, Team Teal, as well. We must make sure into that. But I can't say thank you enough. Andy, what the job that he does as well, um, I think what you do is a credit. Congratulations. You deserve it. Got to say a huge thank you to Garrards for what they have done as well. Look forward to following this bloke's career, but well done to you and uh, keep up the great work. Love interviewing you, one of the best ones to chat to, so thank you very much. Yeah, I'd just like to thank Garrards for sponsoring, um, you know, such an iconic race and to Jack Callahan for swabbing the horse and everyone that pitched in and helped ungear him. The, the track attendants, un unbelievable because um, we didn't have stable hands here, but they wanted us on track, so they arranged it. So thanks to Harness Racing New South Wales and everyone involved with that. Well done, Katie. Thanks.